so hello and welcome to lesson nine of our study of integral equations so in lesson nine we'll talk about method of successive approximation using the kernel know that in our previous video that's lesson eight we talked about the same concept but here we used the free term so in this video be using the kernel so let us consider the Fred Holmes second kind integral equation below. So to find the solution by using the method of approximation using the kernel, we have something that we call iterative kernels. And they are found using the relation listed here i'm going to explain that to you in very simple terms okay so if you could remember from our previous video our final of x was always equal to the free term since we are approximating by the free term so here our k1 of xt is always equal to the kernel k of xt then our k2 of xt is equal to integral from a to b. But here, what we do is that when it comes to our kernel, instead of having k of xt, we change variable. So we change t to x. And you could see that our k1 of xt is equal to k of xt. So instead of using k1 of xt, we do it k1 of what? st. So we just change our x to s. So that gives us this. And we can always find this from this. So that means if k1 of xt is equal to k of xt then k1 of st will be equal to k of st so it's an iterative process so we continue that way so k3 of xt will also be equal to the same thing here but here it is k2 because we use the subsequent ones to find the preceding one and then after we get to our kn of xt will be equal to integral from a to b k of xt then kn minus 1 xt ds right so these are what we call the iterative kernels <laughs> they are very important and that's how we find them don't worry we will illustrate them with examples and the understanding will be clear okay so the unknown function you know when you are solving an integral equation we always find for our unknown function so our unknown function is given by f of x plus lambda integral from a to b gamma xt lambda f of t dt all right where this thing here is called the resolvent kernel the resolvent kernel or the reciprocal kernel and it is given by this relation here so summing from 1 to infinity lambda n minus 1 k n x t where the k n x t are the iterative kernels we learned to find earlier on in the video do you see that so that means if you want to approximate by do approximation by your kernel. The most important thing you have to know is how to find your iterative kernels, which we've gone through. Then you have to know the form in which your solution is going to be in. Alright. So that is going to contain something called the resolvent kernel. And you just know how to find the resolvent kernel. You make substitution and you get your solution. So lots 
let's solve a question to illustrate what we are talking about. So, the question says write down the first three terms using the approximated solution. So, we use the kernel. And note that we've solved this problem before. We solved it in our previous video using the free term. So, in this case, we are going to use our kernel instead of the free term to do the approximation. <coughs> so, writing this question to conform to the general form of the integral equation, we can have this. Then, from this, our kernel case of t is st. Our investigative parameter lambda is negative 1. Our free or false in term f of x is s squared. So now we have to find our iterative kernels. So the first one, k1 of xt is equal to ks of t, in which in the question is xt, right? Then our second one, k2 of xt, will be equal to integral from 0 to 1. So here, k x of s. Then here, k1 s of 4t, ds. So since k x of t is equal to xt, k s of s will be equal to what? So that's what you can see here. <coughs> And you know k1 of st is equal to st. That means k1 of st will be equal to st. You can see here. So when you multiply it, you are going to get st s squared. But since we are integrating with respect to s, <coughs> it means st will be a constant. So we can bring that one out. So we have st out integral from 0 to 1 s squared dx. When you evaluate this definite integral, you're going to get 1 over 3. So you multiply it by xt, and that gives us 1 over 3 xt. I hope you, you get that. Okay. Then let's go to our k3 of xt. So it's an iterative process. So it will be the same as this formula, just that the k1 will be k2, right? And we need the same concept to make substitutions. So here, this is our k1 of xt. It is 1 over 3 xt. So that means k1 of st will be equal to 1 over 3 st. That's what we can see here. You multiply through, send a constant out. We do our integration. Then when we integrate this, you are going to get 1 over 3. We multiply 3, and that gives us 1 over 9 xt. So we do that again for k4 of xt. And that gives us this. Okay. Alright. So, now we have our iterative kernels. We have... K1 of xt, K2 of xt, K3 of xt, and K4 of xt. So we are ending here. And note that the solutions of the form y of x equals f of x plus lambda integral from a to b, the resolvent the kernel f of t dt. So that is the resolvent kernel. So where our resolvent kernel is given by this, all right? So expanding this, so let's expand the compact form of it. That means we have k1 of xt plus lambda, k2 of xt plus lambda squared, k3 of xt plus lambda cube, k4 of xt. <coughs> so when we found our iterative kernels, we had this for k1 of xt, this 1 over 3 xt for k2 of xt, but we've attached the lambda to it. Then we also have this, and we also have that. Okay.
But note that with this particular integral equation, I investigated parameter lambda was negative 1. So putting that inside, we are going to get xt minus 1 over 3 xt plus 1 over 9 xt minus 1 over 27 xt. So what we do is that we you know this here is a geometric progression. It has first term, it has a common ratio. So we can find the sum to infinity. Right? So our common ratio A is xt. No, sorry, our first term, sorry. <laughs> our first term A is xt. And our common ratio R will be minus 1 over 3 xt over <coughs> xt. And that will give you negative 1 over 3. So putting that into the formula of computing the sum to infinity, that's this. We would have this. And when you compute this, you'll get 3 over 4 xt. Okay, alright, but note that, so now this here becomes our resolvent kernel, but note that um, the unknown function is given in this form, so making substitution from the question, our free term was s squared, so we get s squared minus 1. Our lambda is what? Negative 1. So that's why you have negative here. The integral from 0 to 1. Sorry. <coughs> so our resonance kernel is now 3 over 4 xt. And our f of x is s squared. So our f of t will be t squared. So you have t squared here dt. So that means we can bring our constant out. That's minus 3 over 4 x. Then t times t squared give us t cubed dt. So doing that integration is going to give us 1 over 4. You multiply 2 and we'll get s squared minus 3 over 16x. And this happens to be the solution to the integral equation. But you can see that in our previous video, using the free term to do our approximations, we had the same answer. So this is how we do the approximation using the kernel. So you first have to know how to construct your iterative kernels. Know the general form of the solution. Know that there is something called resolvent kernel. How to write a resolvent kernel and how to find that. Okay. So if you should do that, you will always get this. The right as your solution. So um thank you very much and see you in our next video. Alright. All the best.